The fourth best picture, Cimarron, directed by Wesley Ruggles and starring Richard Dix and Irene Dunn, tells the story of Yancy Crevet, who helped build and push America further towards the West during the late 19th century and the early 20th century. When this film was released in 1931, it was a big deal. It was the most expensive film produced by RKO at the time. It had massive sets with hundreds of extras, and relative to the Great Depression that was happening at the time, it was a big hit at the box office. The reviews were overwhelmingly positive. It was regarded as an example of super filmmaking. It was nominated for a record seven Academy Awards. It won a record three, and it was the very first Western to win Best Picture. This film was monumental, and now, 90 years later, I'm probably the only person alive on Earth who's seen it. This is a classic case of a film that was huge at the time of its release, but didn't stand the test of time and faded into obscurity. And I can definitely see why. This film has aged very poorly and it's not that great. The pacing is slow and repetitive, it's filled to the brim with expository dialogue, the cinematography is boring and stagnant, the acting is overdramatic and unconvincing, the list goes on. Also, there are large portions of the film where nothing really happens. Yancy Cravat keeps leaving his home, moving further to the west, going on adventures, but we never see his exploits. Instead, we get a time skip to a few years in the future, and we see what his wife is up to, lonely at home and awaiting her husband's return. Not the most riveting stuff. Also, very dated racial stereotypes. It's unavoidable from films of that era. Just one of these problems would be enough to derail any film, so yeah, pretty bad stuff. But not everything is bad. The movie opens with a grand recreation of the Oklahoma land rush of 1889. Basically, the government gives out free land and whoever gets there first wins. This sequence is very impressive, even to this day. It's one of the greatest horse charges in film history. Not as great as another charge that we'll see later in this Oscar marathon, but I'm getting way ahead of myself. Other than the opening sequence, I also rather liked Yancy Crevet himself. Don't get me wrong, he is quite annoying, and again, the acting is way too overdramatic for my taste. But there's something magnetic about him. He's very boisterous, he always speaks with great gusto, and he's very charismatic. Also, and that's just me, I found it charming that he always talks unironically and unapologetically about how great the United States is. Knowing no law except the law of God and the government of these United States. I know that today it's very trendy and hip to hate on America, so it was refreshing to see the exact opposite for a change. I also liked his wife, Sabra. She starts off as weak, scared, and slightly annoying, but she really grows throughout and ends the film as a force all by herself. So, as you can see, there are some good things about this film, but they're not enough to save it. The negatives far outweigh the positives on this one, unfortunately. Overall, Cimarron is not a good film and it's reflected in the ranking. It's not dead last, I still got more out of it than the Broadway melody, but it's worse than all the rest so far. City Lights should have won Best Picture that year, and it wasn't even nominated. Hell, Dracula and Frankenstein were released in 1931, and they stand the test of time way more than Cimarron, but it is what it is. Up next is the fifth Best Picture winner, the novel-turned-play-turned-box-office hit, Grand Hotel. Check back tomorrow for the next video of DB Review's Oscar Madness Marathon and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss a thing. Thank you all very much and let the journey continue.